Chapter 9, Spicy Weekend Andy talked about work as soon as he sat down. Why did I invite this man to sit, I thought. I realized the fantasy was short-lived and stupid like Amy said. Why would I ever stray away from my Michael? I grew angry with myself while Andy continued talking. Finally, you're here, Amy. Sorry, Andy, I have to go. I rushed off pulling Amy. What happened? Slow down, Amy shouted. I have to find somewhere or something spicy for a weekend with Michael. My marriage is important and I have to save it, I exclaimed. Amy and I googled a resort to book a room, a few local sex shops, and picked out new Karma Sutra positions. After our quick lunch, we headed out to the sex shop on 42nd Street. I picked out a violet negligee with frills. I bought anal lubrication, a paddle, and handcuffs. Amy had agreed to watch the kids for a week. This gave me more time to get everything planned. Later that night, I asked Michael if we could go to the Machibo Beach and Resort for the weekend. How do you feel about that? I said as we scrolled the prices and rooms on the MacBook. Yes, that's fine. Let's go with this room with the cloudburst showerhead, he said. I booked our room and planned our itinerary. We landed and settled in that Friday morning. Do you want to go to the beach and maybe pick up something for lunch? I asked. Yeah, let me change. Pick somewhere nice, he said. We spent an hour and a half on the beach. Coco Loco Beach Bar was nice and simple. We shared the Dutch beef croquets. Michael had the banana colada and I had the frozen mangolicious. I am feeling nice. You want to go back to the room, shower, and relax? Or stay out until the night show starts? I asked Michael, eating the fruit screwer from my drink. Let's go to the room and clean up. He paid the bill and grabbed my hand. The walk back was lovely. All I could think about was giving Michael fellatio. The drink was creeping up on me. I was getting hotter as we stepped into the room. Michael went in the shower first. I watched him bathe through the shower door. I undressed and slipped in behind him. He turned around. I went downtown. I moved him over to place his back on the wall. I licked his chest, his stomach, and the length of his shaft, his hands rubbing my shoulder and neck. He groaned and moaned, deep-throating, teabagging, tongue circles on the head, and using my wet vacuum to help him to his climax. I felt the warm ooze go down my esophagus. We finished cleaning up and went to rest for a while. For dinner, we decided to go to the Fusion Restaurant Wine and Piano Bar. What would you like to order? The waitress asked. The party platter for us to share, two firecrackers, and the cedar wood smoked salmon with green asparagus. Michael placed his order and handed the waitress his menu. I will have the Wagyu beef burger with the green salad and a pineapple jalapeno margarita. I handed the waitress my menu and gave all my attention to Michael, who was looking very handsome in his button-up t-shirt and matching cargos. By the time a good song came on to dance to, I had had my third margarita. We were definitely enjoying ourselves, and the music made us feel free. On the walk home, there was a lot of PDA. Saturday morning, I woke up to find myself passed out on the couch. It was 11.30 a.m. and Michael was nowhere to be found. I took a shower and made myself a small breakfast of eggs and sausage. Good afternoon, how are you feeling? Michael asked as he opened the door. I'm good. I guess I was able to handle my liquor. No hangovers for me. But how did I end up on the couch? I questioned. That's a laugh. You came in, asked me to watch a movie with you, and then knocked out two minutes into the intro. He laughed. Well, all I could do was shake my head. I have a spa couple date set up for us this afternoon at 2.30 p.m. What were your plans this morning? I asked, wondering where he was. I went to the casino. I won 70 bucks. I did a little sightseeing and picked up a surprise souvenir. It's now 1.30, so what are we going to do for the next hour? Michael said while showing me the $70 and a black paper bag. 
There's more sausage and eggs if you're hungry. We can just relax for the next hour, watch some TV maybe. We could finish that movie I fell asleep on. I rambled thinking, why do I always fall asleep so early? Michael put the movie back on and we chilled on the couch. By 2.15, we started getting ready to go to the spa. We took the elevator to the penthouse floor. We walked down the aesthetic colored hallway. The spa was so amazing. We both needed it after all the work that we do on a daily basis and having to run around with the twins. After the massages, we had the hot stones put on our backs. I had to laugh at Michael when he said that what black man would really do this? Some people are accustomed to living in a certain lifestyle and don't know about real luxury in life. The main luxury in life is taking care of your health and your body. I would rather take my man to the spa than buy him unnecessary clothes and jewelry. The stones were taken off our backs and oil was rubbed on. We wrapped our towels around us and walked off to the sauna. Michael didn't know that I had booked a private soundproof sauna session. To his surprise, when I got naked and straddled him, his manhood immediately hardened inside of me. Up and down, round and round I went. He had one hand on my left cheek and the other on my right breast. As he simultaneously caressed and squeezed them, the dam burst. As the rain fell, the thunder roared and the lightning struck. Bodies pressed together, cheeks clapped and hips thrusted. He sucked and kissed my lips. Michael, I moaned in between kisses. Babe, yes. I groaned with every pump. I was not trying to get off this ride, but I knew it had an ending. It was getting very hot and heavy from the steam. I pushed Michael back and moved my legs up. I squeezed my walls together and picked up speed. Oh shit. Michael grabbed underneath both of my thighs and helped me with the rhythm. Our synchronous gasp and release meant a job well done. I laid on his chest for a few seconds to catch my breath. We sort of had to hold each other up on the way back. We got our belongings and went back to our hotel room. Once inside the room, Michael put back on the movie. I made us a nightcap of Bloody Maria's. The movie was halfway through, but we knocked out. I let Mike sleep in this time. I went out to pick up a few things for a spicy cocktail and some candles. When I got back, Mike was still sleeping. This gave me time to set up the room for our wild night. I was never the one to make too much noise when people in the house were sleeping. I managed to tiptoe around placing everything in its place. I put the paddle, handcuffs, and gel next to Michael. I put the candles on the dresser and window ledge. I sprayed pheromone perfume around the room and carpet. I did not spray myself with the perfume because I was going to bathe in fruit oils. Once everything was placed, I went to take my bath. I soaked myself in the fruit oils and warm water. I got out the tub and rubbed myself down with coconut oil. I smelled like coconuts and strawberries. I put on my negligee with the matching thong. In the kitchen, I made the El Rey Del Patio. Playlists were already made. Phone already connected to speakers. So I pressed play. I put the drink into two glasses and waltzed to the bedroom. The music woke Michael up. I sashayed through the doors to see his face full of excitement. My body full of lust and love to give. <laughs>